Hey everyone, welcome to the show. So the far right is still calling for war and for violence, even as Donald Trump and others have been urging everyone to lower the temperature in the country after his near assassination. So on the Trump loving site called The Donald, one person wrote, quote, I guess they really do want war. Other people responded to that post and they said things like, quote, let's give it to them. Quote, I'm ready. This is my last damn straw. And quote, civil fucking war, all in caps. I'm ready to be done with this fucking shit from Democrats. Another user posted, quote, war now. They don't want to live and let live. We need to finish what should have been done after the civil war eradicate and eliminate all Democrats and anyone who even thinks of being a Democrat. Funny that they say we're the ones who won't live and let live when they're the ones that are trying to shut down the LGBTQ community, you know, gay marriage, drag queens, books. Yeah. <sighs> what would they be without their hypocrisy? Anyway, another person said, quote, I told my neighbor that if Trump had been killed, I would have pulled my kit out, quit my job, and started working on my wish list. Over on Telegram, a New York Proud Boys member wrote, quote, Too bad for them they missed probably their only shot at this failed attempt because they are about to really see what happens when you poke the bear for too long, i.e. true American patriots. No punctuation in that whatsoever. <laughs> it went on to say, fuck the DNC, fuck the rhinos, fuck the feds, and fuck the MSM. They should all be hung in the streets. There was also an Ohio Proud Boys member who posted on Telegram. He wrote, quote, I'm assuming it's a he since they don't like women. Anyway, he wrote, quote, laugh and smirk now, you leftist C words, but never fucking forget, you will always reap what you sow. Now, of course, he didn't write C words. He actually used the, the word in his threat. Um, we're also now getting new details about how the audience reacted after Trump was shot and about the gunmen as well. So videos from Saturday, you may have seen um, right after the shooting, it showed several members of Trump's audience flipping off members of the media. They were screaming at them. And an Axios reporter who was at the rally, she reported that Trump's supporters started yelling at her and the other media figures. And they were saying things like, quote, fake news, this is your fault, and quote, you're next, your time is coming. She also said some of them tried to break into the media area, the media pit, but luckily security guards stopped them. Um, and then extremist MAGA Republicans are also throwing gasoline on this fire. So as I'm sure you guys all know, a bunch of them over the weekend were accusing Democrats, they were accusing the media for Trump's shooting. And Georgia Republican Marjorie Trader Greene really ramped up the attacks. She started making all kinds of false accusations against Democrats. Nothing we haven't heard before, but, you know, in light of what just happened, you'd think that she'd reel it in a little bit. No. On Sunday, she posted this on Twitter that you see on your screen here. So for anybody on the podcast, what it says is, quote, we are in a battle between good and evil. That is true. The Democrats are the party of pedophiles murdering the innocent unborn, violence, and bloody, meaningless, endless wars. They want to lock up their political opponents and terrorize innocent Americans who would tell the truth about it. The Democrat Party is flat out evil, and yesterday they tried to murder President Trump. I mean... First of all, reading is fundamental, right? I, so I guess no one has read her the reports since she obviously can't read them herself. No one has read her the report showing that the gunman was a Republican, registered Republican, very, very conservative. Second, 
she should really dial back the whole pedophilia rhetoric, right? Ixnay on the pedophilia A. <laughs> rhetoric A. <laughs> Given the fact that Trump was accused by a woman who claims he beat and raped her when she was only 13 years old at Jeffrey Epstein's New York mansion, right? Anyway, um, here's what we know now about this would-be assassin. As you guys all know, it's 20-year-old Matthew, um, or excuse me, Thomas Matthew Crooks. And here, here's what went down that day. Here's the new details that we now have. So the FBI has seized Crooks' devices. Um, they're trying to see if they can gain some insight into his motives, especially now that we know that he was a registered Republican. And one of Crooks' classmates confirmed he was definitely a conservative. A man named Max Smith, he went to high school with Crooks. Um, he was in a history class with him, and he told the Philadelphia Inquirer Crooks definitely identified as a conservative in that history class. So Smith said the teacher once had a mock debate, and the teacher asked the students to move to opposite sides of the room, she, she or he, I don't know if it was a male or female teacher, but the teacher said, you know, if you're a conservative, go on this side. If you're a liberal, go on that side. Smith told the news outlet, quote, the majority of the class were on the liberal side. But Tom, no matter what, always stood his ground on the conservative side. That's still the picture I have of him, just standing alone on one side while the rest of the class was on the other. I don't know about you guys, but that gives me hope that, you know, the younger people in Pennsylvania are liberal and they see that the Republican Party is scum. Anyway, um, we also now have a video. There's video evidence that's been shared by TMZ, and it shows Crooks on the roof of the building where he took the shots at Trump. Now, I'm not going to share it with you guys. I don't want to get hit with a copyright infringement, so I, I will not post it here in this video. But what I'll do is I'll leave a link for you in the description box. Uh, if you're on YouTube or the podcast, you can find it there and you guys can watch it for yourself. Um, it shows the shooter. I'll just describe it for anybody who doesn't want to see it. Doesn't show, you know, anything gory, but it shows the shooter. He's laying down on the roof of the building. He's looking through a scope. People outside of the rally who were near that building where he was laying on top of it, um, they were obviously recording him. That's where this video came from. You could hear these people screaming. They're trying to alert the authorities. One woman sound complete, sounded completely frantic. She was yelling for someone to come back. She was saying, you know, like, come here, come here. I don't know if it was a kid or if it was an adult that she was yelling at and where they were headed to, but you can tell she is completely in a full-blown panic and don't blame her for that. I mean, you see somebody shooting potentially at the former president and yeah, you don't want to get in the way of that. Um, I also, I want to apologize for my earlier post on Saturday about the shooter being in a water tower. So where that came from was I was watching live news reports as I was sharing stuff with you guys, and that's what someone reported. That And obviously it was incorrect. They also, at the time, said they thought that there was more than one shooter, that there was one in the water tower and maybe somebody else somewhere else um, because there were so many shots that they heard. So people were saying, I don't know if that's true. I don't know if it was like the, you know, um, an echo of the shots, if they were firing back at him. So that's not something I shared, but it was obviously false as well. And it's now being reported that a local police officer tried to intervene. This police officer saw Crooks, went to stop him before he took his first shots, but Crooks pointed his rifle at the officer, so the officer backed off. And then in the interim, that's when he shot. So that may explain why Crooks' shot was so off, or not so off, but why he also hit audience members instead of Trump, because it sounds like between the police being aware of his, you know, be, being there, of his his possession of a gun, being on top of, of the roof of a building, um, also the crowd now obviously realizing that he was there and alerting the police to his presence. It sounds like he had to take some rush shots at Trump, maybe if he had time to, to set up more, then, you know, it, his shot would have been more accurate. Um, so we don't know. But 
One of his shots, as you all know, it was very close. It did hit Trump in the ear. It was not from his teleprompter. It has been confirmed. It was from a bullet. Um, so, you know, he, he must have had a lot of practice because one of his high school classmates told ABC News, Crooks was such a, quote, terrible shot, their school's rifle team basically kicked him out. They asked him, don't come back. The classmate said, quote, he didn't just not make the team. He was asked not to come back because how bad of a shot he was. It was considered like dangerous. So must have gotten some training in the interim since he was in high school. Again, he was 20, you know, graduated a couple of years ago. I don't know what grade he was in when he was in this rifle club. But anyway, um, you know, you, you could become a pretty good shot with a couple of years experience. I mean, I was at a, a range for only a few hours and my shot improved tremendously. I was hitting the clown right between the eyes and in the crotch. So from quite a distance. Anyway, it, it you know, it, it just takes practice. He also said that Crooks was lonely. That's how he described him, lonely, socially reserved, um, and, quote, a very nice, guy, even sweet guy from what I knew. And the classmate also said, quote, I was friends with him. He never acted like, by any means, a political revolutionary. So... Again, we don't know what happened. We don't know what set this guy off, what his motive was. Like I said in another video, what we do know is he's obviously not a Trump supporter. We, you know, that's pretty obvious. But other than that, we don't know what the impetus was for this shooting. Anyway, as we hear more, I will definitely keep you guys posted, let you know what, what comes up and if they find anything that, that gives us a clear motive. Thank you all so much for watching and listening. Please like, please share, and subscribe to the channel if you have not. If you can donate, really appreciate it. Links are below in the description box on YouTube and the podcast. Love you all. Take care. Talk with you soon.